Hi, this is our explanation of full sentences versus fragments. And this presentation will discuss the handout that's available in Blackboard called Full Sentences versus Fragments. So the first thing that you need to look at on the handout is the full sentence test. Now, when I was in high school, I had a pretty good sense of what was a full sentence and what wasn't, but honestly, I couldn't have told you what made a full sentence and what didn't. And it wasn't until college that someone told me how to know whether or not I had a full sentence for sure. And I want you to know as early as possible if you don't already. And the easiest way I can explain how to know for sure whether you have a full sentence or not is to run the full sentence test. So a full sentence has to have three elements. Uh, therefore, you ask the questions, does it have a verb? Does it have a subject? And does it make sense on its own? And if what you have fails any part of the test, then it's not a full sentence. It's a fragment and you need to fix it. So let's talk about what these words mean. So we're talking about verbs first. And there are actually two kinds of verbs. There are action verbs and linking verbs. Now this might be the part where you freak out because you think you might have to diagram a sentence. You're not gonna have to diagram a sentence. What you really need to do is be able to pick out what the verb is reliably and knowing the difference between action verbs and linking verbs is going to help you do that, help you pick out whether or not you have a verb. So the first kind of verb we're talking about are action verbs. Action verbs are the ones that we tend to think of. They're physical or mental actions like run, jump, thought, imagined. So in these two examples, Mario ran to the store. Right away, you can see that ran is a physical action. And then the dog ate the treat. Ate or eating is a physical action. So those are the action verbs. And those are the ones we tend to pick out fairly easily. It's the linking verbs that are naughty and tricky and hard to find. You're not going to have to tell me whether you have an action verb or a linking verb, but you need to be able to pick out sneaky linking verbs. So linking verbs are verbs that link the description to the subject and they follow a certain pattern. So you're going to notice this pattern of subject plus linking verb plus description. And if the description points back at the subject, then you know for sure you have a linking verb. And I'm going to show you how to pick that out in a minute. But the reason why they're tricky is these verbs tend to be short and they don't look like verbs. And so we need to know how the sentence works in order to pick out those darn linking verbs. And one thing I want you to know is watch for to be verbs because those tend to be small and weird. So when you conjugate to be, you end up with words like is, was, were, have been, be, am. Anytime you see those, go, ah, I probably have a linking verb. Okay, so in the examples, we have the first one, the dog is smelly. So the first thing in here, like there are two hints that we have a linking verb. First, we have is, one of the to be verbs. The other hint is that right away we notice smelly, which is an adjective or a description. And if we look at our description, smelly, we ask ourselves, what is it describing? It's describing the dog. So it fits our pattern. The next one, the cookie tasted great. Well, tasted, that could be a physical action, but we know it's a linking verb because it's linking great, the description, back to cookie. Knowing that pattern helps us pick out whether or not we have a verb. So now let's talk about subjects. Subjects are nouns, like a person, place, or thing. But the rest of the definition is a little more complex because it matters whether or not you have a linking verb or an action verb. So the subject of a sentence, person, place, or thing, 
when you have an action verb, it is the who or what doing the action. So in these examples, Mario ran to the store. We already know ran is our action verb. So we ask ourselves who or what is doing the running. That's Mario. So he's the subject. And the dog ate the tree. We ask ourselves who or what is doing the eating. The dog. So we know we have a subject. So already we know both of those have a subject and a verb. They pass that part of the test. Now, the linking verb ones. So a subject with the linking verb, it's a, it's a person, place, or thing. It's the who or what being described. So in the first one, the dog is smelly. So smelly is a description. And we ask ourselves, what is that describing? The dog. And the arrow points back the right way, so we know that dog is the subject. It's the who or what that is smelly. We have a subject and a verb. And the cookie tasted great. We're asking ourselves who or what um, was great. It was the cookie. So we have a subject and a verb. Subjects are often fairly easy to pick out but it's important to know how they work in case you get a super tricky sentence. All right, so we're gonna practice running our full sentence test, especially with the, does it have a verb? And I want you to look at these three sentences. You'll notice they all talk about a baby. The baby is the subject. So we're checking to see, does it have a verb? And I'm gonna read each sentence and then pause and you decide whether it's a fragment or a full sentence because does it have a verb? If it has a verb, it's still in contention for a full sentence. So, the baby in the bathtub. Do you see a verb? The funny baby with the brown hair. Do you see a verb? And the baby smells awful. Do you see a verb? In the first one, we don't have a verb. Sometimes it in tricks people, but it's not an action. And the bathtub doesn't describe the baby, so it doesn't follow our patterns. So it's not the verb. The funny baby with the brown hair. Now, with could trick people, but it's not an action. And it's not linking a description. But you go, but brown is a description. So here's what to ask yourself. What is brown describing? The hair, right? That the arrow goes the wrong way. So it's not working for us. The baby smells awful. The verb is smells. It's linking awful to the baby. So that's how those would have gone with the does it have a verb part of the test. Now I want to focus on does it have a subject? So we have running to the sink. They have a subject. Though falling down, does it have a subject? Joe is tall. Does that one have a subject? Well, the first two don't, the last one does. Running to the sink. Running looks like a verb. So we ask ourselves, who or what is doing the running? We don't know. We would have to add a subject to fix it. So falling down, who or what is doing the falling? We don't know. So we'd have to add a subject to fix it. The last one, Joe is tall. You see the is in the description word tall, and is is one of our to be linking verbs, and tall points back to Joe. So we know we do have a linking verb, so we're asking ourselves who or what is tall. Joe, we have a subject, so that one's good. All right, so here is the last part we haven't really talked about. Does it make sense on its own? And this is the part you have to just develop a gut sense for. And one of the things to watch for is sometimes you're going to have something that has a subject and a verb. So it passes the first two, but it fails. The does it make sense on its own? So sorry, let me go back. When I was young, it sounds unfinished. It sounds like it left you hanging. 
Sentences like this often have a word at the beginning that makes it a fragment because it makes it not uh, make sense on its own. When I was young, what? We don't know. As a subject and a verb, the I and the was subject, I was verb. But it still fails the full sentence test because it doesn't make sense on its own. So there are two ways to fix it. You can fix it by crossing off the word that broke it. So I was young. Now it makes sense on its own. It still has a subject and a verb. The other way to fix it is if you have a fragment, like when I was young, add it to a full sentence. When I was young, I was a brat. Then in this case, the I was is a subject and verb, and the I was a brat is the full sentence. By the way, that sentence is true. So that is the full sentence test to know whether or not you have a full sentence or a fragment. When you know for sure that you have a full sentence or a fragment, you can do really interesting things with how you put together sentences. So that's why we are focusing so heavily on being really good at telling the difference between a full sentence and a fragment. Now, go ahead and try out the exercises. See how you did. Remember, there's an answer key after them that you can check and see how you did. Good luck.